Ryan, what are you doing? I'm just hanging with my buddies. And we're so happy you're hanging with us for Garden Time's first hour-long show of the season. Welcome to Garden Time and our first hour-long show of the season. As you can tell, the color is arriving. And speaking of color, we're down here at French Prairie Gardens. And coming up, we'll be talking to Katie about some of their beautiful basket combinations. And also, coming up in the show today, we'll show you how to plant a fruit tree. We're also going to show you how to divide clematis. But coming up first, spring color. Well, color, 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 we're with Ellen. We're down in Egan Gardens. And Ellen, it is spring, and it, we're full of color. We are full of color, and some of it's okay to make your garden full of color, and some of it should really wait. There's uh, historical reasons for the tradition of April Fool's Day, but I think it's really about the fact that gardeners get fooled almost every year into planting too early, and then it freezes hard at night, and it really damages what you planted. But we've got teasers here because they're just too pretty to not show people. So this is previews of coming attractions. <laughs> we have begonias, all kinds of begonias, Selenia begonias. Um, they've become real favorites because they can go either in sun or in shade and perfectly happy either way. Masses of color all summer, um, more resistant to mildew than a lot of kinds of begonias are. You really can't go wrong with the Selenia. And new over the last couple of years are the Iconia begonias. They're a little more upright than the Solenias. They also seem to be quite tolerant of a wide range of conditions, and they've got a huge range of color. So we really like the Iconias. Now for the full shade, we've got Rex begonias. A lot of people think of these as being just a house plant, kind of like a grandma plant, but they're just gorgeous outside in full shade all summer long. I have one that's about five years old and it's a monster. Just keep it in a pot by itself, keep it watered and happy in the shade, and it's a huge planter just all on its own. They come in all different colors. These are Terra Nova varieties that are really cool. They're the Nautilus ones with the curly leaves and the T-Rexes that'll get really big. So, you know, not all of the annuals that you see out we need to be too worried about. There are definitely some that can go outside, right? Yes, like our classic Martha Washingtons. If you've been to Garden Palooza, you've seen our Marthas there. And they're still here, even if there isn't a Garden Palooza. You can come on down to Egan Gardens to get them. In fact, you should do that pretty soon because they're selling out fast. Marthas are very cold tolerant and can go outside now. And then, you know, aside from the annuals, you also have some really great perennials. So I think let's head outside and we'll take a look at some of these great perennials that we can put in the ground okay. now. So Ellen, not only do you have all the amazing annuals, but you have this great selection of perennials that can go outside right now, right? Yes, we do. A lot of perennials aren't in bloom yet, but the ones that are, are beautiful. This is one of my favorites since I have a very shady yard. This is a blue heron corridalis. And it, I'm going to drop the mask, is so fragrant that you want to have it right near a door so you can smell it whenever you go by. Beautiful blue plant for the shade. For out in the sun, we have Harmony anemones. These are 100% hardy. A lot of anemones you can't quite count on, but these will be back every year. Wonderful cut flowers with those great big poofy flowers and good old-fashioned columbine in reds and yellows and blues and purples. Just the easiest thing there is to grow. Right, so, you know, for so much inspiration for our yard, for being on our containers or out, there's so much more we can do, you know, to get that color in our yard right now. So, you know, for a great selection of annuals and perennials and all things blooming and lots of inspiration, make sure you come down to Egan Gardens, come see Ellen and her staff and come get inspired for spring. So, thank Ellen, you. thank you so much. Thank you.
Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong winds, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. I am at a favorite place. I am in Lake Oswego at the Rogers and Clematis Garden with our favorite Linda Bueller. <laughs> Hi. So Linda, you know, we are here and seeing pretty things all the time, but now everything is pretty much dormant, but you have a special tour for us this time. Right. So people always ask us, what should I be doing with my clematis this time of year? And we talk about pruning and shaping, but something else you can do, and especially with the herbaceous perennial varieties that don't climb, is you could be dividing your plants this time of year. Of course. <laughs> so sometimes you'll go look at them and they will have already started to push apart. And so it's like a hosta or a daylily. You're looking for multiple growth points just at the, at the point where it comes out of the ground. And sometimes it's pretty obvious, and sometimes, like with Skylark here, mm -hmm. it may not be quite so obvious. But we're gonna go ahead and move this around out of the way. Okay. And move the inventory tag right. out of the way. And we'll save the biggest piece to come back here. Uh, but you can see we've got multiple points mm -hmm. where it's coming up out of the ground. So we want to get a fair amount of roots, even though it probably won't end up keeping them. But that's kind of a rule for any kind of division. You always want a lot of roots to start with, right. and then you see what's going on underground. Right. And you want to go all the way around yeah. and loosen up the soil ball and the root ball. And then we have one of our nice trug buckets okay. for hauling plants. All right. And, and really, it, the plant itself is only a couple inches. It's just breaking dormancy, so right. this is the right time of year. There you go. All right. All right. We'll haul it to our work table. All right, and so we're going to go over there, and then you'll actually do the division there. Yeah. All right. Now, Linda, we're in a different part of the garden here. Where are we? We're out at the sales terrace, oh. but I wanted to be able to do this away from the road because uh, it's loud over there. It is a little bit. Um, and so now I have one of my favorite garden tools. <laughs> okay. This is a chopstick from your basic Awajamaya or any, you right. know. Pretty high tech there. Pretty high tech, but it's fabulous for knocking the soil off the root ball and teasing the roots apart so we can start to see what we have. And I also have a big bucket of water here so that when I get a lot of soil off, I actually will bathe it. So that by the time I'm actually dividing, there will be hardly any soil on here so that I can see what I'm doing and I'm seeing exactly where the crowns are. But here's one little crown sure. that's already loosening up. And do you want to do it in big clumps so that you have something to show this season? Uh-oh, we got another one though. There yes. you go. I always have more chopsticks. 
That was an old one. So about the clumps, do you want to divide into big clumps so that you have right. a substantial plant? Right. So we'll save the biggest piece to go back in the ground where we got it from. Okay. And we're, we're working on a plant. This is Skylark. It's a selection of Clematis integrifolia. And it's a lighter blue than is typical. And it has a beautiful flower form. When it's fully open, the sepals spread out and they look, they kind twist twisty. and they flip and they look like a bird's wing. And it's so different, these bell shape versus the big flat yeah. flower flowers of clematis. So right. it's really a special one. But you know, this time of year, you can also divide your large flowered hybrids. Okay. If you look at them in the ground and it's sort of like, you know, if you see new mm -hmm. shoots coming up, um, you can cut them back and lift them and divide them just like this. It is so nice because you want to share it, you want to put right. one in another part of the garden. Exactly. So, and it's really healthy for the plant to divide too. Right, right. Gets that old, old wood out of there. Okay, I'm going to give this a little bath. Okay. Okay, so you really took so much of the soil away and I see you kind of wiggling the, the right. crown. So what are you doing? Um, it's starting to separate all by itself. Oh. I do have my root saw out here, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'm going to need it because it's really breaking apart very nicely all by itself. And that's usually a little bit less trauma. It's more natural to break right. where the breaks are. Right. And if it's breaking, if the old crown under there is breaking. There you go. Yeah. So I think I'm going to be able to take these apart too. That is good. Just manhandle it a little bit or woman handle it as the case may be. And then how do you want to replant these? Then? So we'll add a little more planting compost to the hole. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll put a little bit of our organic rose and flower food in there. And then uh, just, you know, replant. With these, we like to use a gravel mulch over the top to keep the water from pooling up around the crown. You and then I do need to ask you, it's like this is a really special weekend because you're open again for the we season. We are. Our opening day is Friday and this year we are open way more hours oh, wonderful. for uh, shopping than we have been before. So it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday and the weekend days, Saturday and Sunday wow. that we're open. Ah. The only days we're closed are Tuesday and Thursday. Ah. And it's all of those days, it's 10 until 2. Oh, that's wonderful. You can order online and pay online. If there's something that you really want, we don't hold plants for you unless you've paid for it online. Perfect. Um, but otherwise, come and browse. You know, COVID restrictions apply. We want you, when you're on the sales terrace, to be wearing a mask. Of course. And our volunteers will be wearing masks. And yeah come visit. Yeah, definitely. You know, any time of the year, it's beautiful out here. It is a dormant season, but there's still so much to see. Please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over their website. Linda's in charge of putting all the pretty pictures on their website so you can come out and see what's blooming once we get into the spring. Thanks so much, Linda. Thank you. Spring is all about freshness, and you can't get any fresher than Blooming Junction. From new and interesting annuals and perennials that can bring fresh color to your garden, to the freshest of produce from our fields and from local growers. We can also help you be successful with our full slate of timely and helpful classes. Freshen up your home and garden, inside and out, with a visit to Blooming Junction. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens and great tasting food for your table. You work hard in the garden. Shouldn't your gloves do the same? Garden Like a Girl makes gloves and apparel from natural, recycled, and organic materials. Garden Like a Girl gloves will help you tackle any job. They are designed to fit, protect your hands and nails, and they last. Plus, 10% of our profits go to cancer research. To learn more about Garden Like a Girl products, go to our website, gardenlikeagirl.com. Garden Like a Girl, ruggedly feminine. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. 
Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Ryan, you need to brush up your look. Ryan, that is better. It's always better when you show off your Garden Time pride. Check out the Garden Time store on our webpage for a great selection of Garden Time gifts and apparel. Choose a hoodie, shirt, hat, bag, or mask for yourself or as a gift for the Garden Time fan in your life. See the complete selection on the Garden Time website. Pick up some Garden Time gear and show your Garden Time pride. Well, we're surrounded by beautiful hanging baskets, which must mean we are out at French Prairie Gardens, and you guys have great baskets, and you know, they're ready to go, but you have a little different combos coming up this oh, year. Oh yeah, we do. We're always known for our hanging baskets. We spend a lot of time putting some thoughts into our combinations and try to change them up every year. So this year we did a few with some small little dahlias in the center. It's always a favorite when some of our ladies come out to create their own, so we thought we'd do it for them. Right? And I saw, you know, you even have some with upright like the coleus. Oh yeah, people are really into the foliage this year, so we thought we'd throw in some coleus and some of the smaller fine flowers like the lobelias and the biddens and the million bells, and it's just going to be gorgeous. Right, and I was just looking at this, you know, this petunia is just stunning. It looks like it's been bleached out. It does, it does. It's a new one this year. It's called Crystal Sky. It's a sister or a cousin to the night sky, the one that's purple with all the white dots. So right. we have, I think, four different kinds of the spotted petunias this year. And, you know, the number of combinations that you guys do is just is staggering. Yes, we do. We have, I think, almost 70 varieties of just the sun um, small mix, and then probably about 30 of the larger ones, and we have them in shade, we have them in city baskets, you name it, even in single combinations as well. Right. And, you know, you know, people can come out and get the baskets here, but you also have a fun event coming up too. That you we guys do. Are known for. So we've always done our ladies' night. It's always been the end of March, beginning of April, and unfortunately, we can't do the night with a lot of people. But we're going to have Ladies' Day, and right. people can come and sign up, and they can have two hours here, and they can create their own basket. We'll have our plant show and tell set up. They kind of have their own little personal class with the farmers, which is which is super fun because they get to come out and create create their own unique. Exactly. Artwork. We'll give them a class and teach them how to do it. They can look at our baskets for inspiration and then we'll have a tent in the area that they can have just with their people and of course we always have our drinks and our food available. Right. And it's a little bit different this year for people that have come out in the past. What do they need, need to know about it this well, year? Well we need to book online ahead of time because yeah. we're only doing so many people per two hour sessions and it will be on a Saturday and Sunday the 10th and 11th and so they can come reserve get their girlfriends or whoever they feel safe to, right. to be with reserve that time purchase the class, and then basically show up before and we'll show them what to do. Right, and it's, oh, it's always a great event. It's, you know, it's a lot of fun, you know. So you'll, you'll want to get, make sure you do get, get online ahead of time and book those tickets. So, you know, for more information about that, you know, I'm assuming it's all over your, your website. It is, definitely, yeah. yes. And is that, that the best place for them to sign website, up? Website, yeah, or through our Facebook page, either or. Okay, you know, so for more information on the event for Ladies' Night or for any of the other, you know, beautiful baskets and plants that they have out here at French Prairie, you know, make sure you go to their website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. So, you know, we are so, always so inspired to be out here and oh. ready for spring. Oh, so thank, thank you. you, thank you. Well, when you think of ground covers, you think of Little Prince. I'm with Nick. We're out here at Little Prince today. And Nick, there are some areas that are just really tough to get some ground covers in. There are, especially when it's under um, an eave of a um, house or um, underneath a huge tree. And so we, we like to talk about our dry shade ground covers today. And so um, let's start on over here. Okay. We've got our epimediums, which uh, are... Um, they kind of clump a little bit, but they do like to kind of have that heart-shaped foliage come on out. Right, and so, it's, you know, you look at those and that's just, you know, the foliage mm -hmm. is beautiful. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's got a great bloom. It does have a great bloom. And if we look over here at the blooms, it's got some nice dangling tendrils here. 
and it, it just looks beautiful. And so um, what we do uh, like to do is uh, put this into the ground and of course you don't want to forget it for that first year. You're going to want to um, kind of pay attention to it a little bit, um, give it uh, its water and its nutrients. You don't want to just leave it and let it struggle. Right. You're going to want to kind of give it a little bit of tender care, but um, you do uh, after it gets that first year of growth then it's kind of pretty hardy there. You know, because it is easy this time of year, you know, when it's, we're getting lots of rain, but you know, those areas of the yard that you kind of forget about because you think mm -hmm. it's raining all the time, exactly. but they still stay dry, so we do need to watch exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. So we've got our upper medium rubrum here and our purple pixie. And um, now we're gonna start talking about our Oxalis oregana, which is a native um, species here. Uh, and what's really cool, um, I actually didn't know this before working here, but oxalis comes from the Greek word oxy, which is acidic. And it's actually for the juices are actually a little bit acidic, which is pretty oh, cool. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a cool one. This one's what I called Klamath Ruby. Oh yeah, the ruby, it's called the ruby because of the color underneath the foliage here. It's really nice, kind of that ruby red, which is amazing. Beautiful. And you know, both of these are more kind of a clumping, more mounding, mm -hmm. yes. right? Yes, they do kind of clump and they, um, they mound. And uh, if you're looking for something that to cover up more area, you're going to want to look for your Eunominus Oolong's ghost here because these have dangling tendrils that kind of go on out and kind of fill in that spot for you. And these are, this one is nice because you get that really, you know, the white variegation. So mm -hmm. a lot of times the more shade with that one, the brighter that white will be. Exactly, exactly. And it's a nice, you know, because covering that large area and being evergreen, it's nice to, you know, for erosion controls or just filling up a large exactly. area. Exactly, especially because um, if you're looking for evergreens, you're going to want to look more over here because our epimediums do kind of brown a little bit during the winter. You kind of do want to cut them back a little bit during okay. that time. And it looks like you got some others down down at the end. Yeah, so we've got our, um, our Pachysandras here, um, the straight uh, Pachysandra terminalis, which is uh, right here. And then uh, our green sheen, which has a little bit more of a nice, like, little waxy um, sheen to it here. And then our silver edge, which has a nice, like, little white silvery on the leaf here. And, you know, another very durable, durable plant. You know, it, it will spread with the mm -hmm. little underground shoots, but not be super aggressive, right? Exactly, exactly. We don't want it to be too aggressive because then you're out there all the time. And we're talking more about things that will thrive um, without too much effort. Right. So when, you know, when we're planting these and taking the, is there things that we should be doing to the soil to kind of amend these a little bit? Um, I'd say um, not too much, uh, but you're going to want to still give it its nutrients to help it kind of root and get that strong foundation. Right. Kind of a d good typical dig a hole a little bit bigger, mix in some good planting mix. And exactly, then, exactly. And, and water them in well, so even though they are the drought, drought tolerant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, of course. They are drought tolerant, but you want to give them that water so they do get that foundation. Great. You know, so, you know, Little Prince grows a ton of different ground covers and, you know, where, where can we go find, find our ground covers? Well, you can go to your independent garden center or you can go to littleprinceplants.com. And, you know, there's tons of information on your website or for more information on ground covers or a dry shade area, make sure you go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over. So, Nick, we appreciate all the information and we look forward to getting out in the garden. Awesome. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. At Capital Subaru, we are family. It's not all about selling cars here. It's about our community and our families. We keep you moving. With a Subaru, it's always, what are you going to do next? And with our new space, we'll get you service faster than ever before. And we are growing. With over 72,000 square feet and 30 new service bays. Our new location is opening later this spring. I can't wait. It's a new year and it's going to be awesome. At Capital Subaru, we are your way on the parkway. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Don't lose the battle with weeds. The Bonide line of weed beater products will help you get a handle on your weed problems. They are active in cool weather and you'll see visible results in less than 24 hours. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. 
At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. I'm at Bauman's Farm and Garden today with Brian Bauman. And so, Brian, this winter was really hard on so many plants in our yeah. gardens, and I think especially hedge material. I've seen Arborvita just all opened up, and so you have just some really great ideas for replacements. It's absolutely the number one question when people come into the garden center right now. They, they've got these problems from this, this last winter. It was rough. The number one, I have people all the time, they come in and they say, oh my God, I have not seen my neighbors in 10 years, <laughs> and now those trees are gone, right. what do I do? Right. Um, so they want something fast, they want something that stays green all year round, and my, my go-to plant is a Leland cypress. Interesting. It grows yeah. super fast, it'll grow in clay soil, really rich soil, it's very diverse. But one of the things I always tell people, a lot of times people come in and get plants, they plant it in the ground and then forget about it. Mm. A lot of these trees need time for those roots to really get Definitely. in and get established. And so you really need to make sure you water these all summer this summer. Um, or else you end up with this brown stick by fall, yeah. and nobody wants that. No, that's really a great tip. And Leyland Cypress, that wouldn't be my first thought because you think of Arborvita, right. and which is great, but why not do something different? Something different, and you know, Arborvita, the number one complaint I get, when they open up, it's all brown inside. Yeah. You don't get that with the Leyland Cypress. Um, they respond to hedging or pruning once a year really, really well. Um, and like I said, the different types of soil, it doesn't really matter. And Really, Leland Cypress is just the beginning of some other plants available. Nice. Tell us about some more. So my favorite plant, and, and <laughs> I oh, use this a lot of time during the winter time because it smells so good, and it's this blue ice cypress. Ooh, it's pretty. another cypress, and if you kind of run it through your hands, oh, it just smells smell so it. good. Again, a lot of these cypresses are very drought tolerant, so you don't need to worry about watering it after we get those roots established beautiful blue color all all Very year nice. round great for cuttings like i said gets these beautiful cones on it I like a lot them. of conifers do cool um, we have it in blue and we also have a golden variety as well neat neat and i bet you have some others uh, so <laughs> I, i'm always trying to think of something new right sure something that's a little different um and the funny thing is it's kind of like we're going back to um, our roots um this is a strawberry tree very cool um, it's actually native to oregon has this beautiful bark it's evergreen it has beautiful flowers in the springtime, these kind of little red berries that look mm -hmm. like strawberries in the fall. Um, it, it has something for every season. What a great plant to use as a hedging item around your house. I love it, I just love it. And then it looks like you have some things for smaller hedges too. Right, I, boxwoods are the great standby. Mm -hmm. They're evergreen, they'll stay more compact, um, easy. To me, it provides more of a formal look mm -hmm. to a guard, just sure. this nice, clean look. That's exactly what my parents have in the front of their house. Sure. My mom, she wants everything clean and neat and ready to go, and that's, that's her thing. Boxwoods were the way to go for her. But they have their place. I think that's great. And for talking about formal versus informal, mm -hmm. you don't have to have the same plant all along your property line. You can mix it up. Mix it up, absolutely. Do a, a clumping of like some green Leland cypress and then some of the blue ice cypress. and Another evergreen plant that looks great year round is like an evergreen magnolia. Ooh. Um, beautiful foliage. Again, you can use it as cutting during the winter time. Um, I will say it makes a mess. It drops a lot of those big yeah, leaves. It's beautiful. something you've got to clean. It's absolutely gorgeous. But I always think it's good to like put the good and the bad together. I'd rather them know going in what of they course, got. Of course. And then give us some tips about planting because really you just want to give <clears throat> these plants so much um, extra to have them successful. Right. So we spend all this money and all this beautiful plant material. It's really important that you spend just a little bit extra mm -hmm. to make sure that we get those roots started right. So when you're planting, you're digging your hole for your plant. Make sure that that hole is about twice the size as the pot. We're gonna mix in some planting compost in it. Definitely. And with every tree and shrub we sell, we always recommend using Espoma products. They're natural and organic. The company's been around forever. Long time. And they really, it's all about making that soil really nutritious and all the stuff that's in there accessible to the plant. Oh, definitely. So those roots get in there, they get going, and you much have a much better plant later on. 
Oh, I think that those are, that's a wonderful tip to remember. For any of your plantings that you're doing this spring or any time of the year, compost and espoma, I think that's the go-to products to Absolutely. get. Absolutely, yes. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for all that information. And really, if you had damage this winter, or if you didn't and you just need some new conifers or new evergreens, please go to gardentime.tv. We can click over to Bauman's and you can find out all the information to come out here and pick up your plants for this year. Thanks so much, Brian. Thanks, Judy. This week's plant pick is brought to you by Little Prince. Our plants won't croak. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. This week, check out our specials. Our wonderful strawberries are only $2.50 and our four inch tomatoes are only a dollar. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle, develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Kick off the spring right at the ladies days at French Prairie Gardens. Enjoy local craft brews, cider and baked treats and learn about new plants for the coming year. Register to join this basket planting party. Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Garden. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. You know, it's not too long ago that it was the end of winter and we always get some kind of a blowdown from trees around us. Well, you might want to get out there with a chainsaw. So I have some information from Wayne from Steel. And so, you know, we want to get out there and really clean up our property. So you really have some tools and some safety equipment we can talk about. You bet. And you know, when you see, have these winds, you're always eager to go after the biggest tree that's out there that's fell. And oftentimes that isn't the one that you need to address. There's a lot of smaller stuff. Sure. And so you get a big saw that's a lot of work to run and it's proper for the first six cuts. And after that, it's a lot heavier than it needs to be. <laughs> that's true, that is true. Yeah. So, Maybe call the professionals for that. Yeah, there's, there's pros for doing that and they, it doesn't cost that much to have them work up just a portion of something. But then you can go back and, and work on the limbs and the small wood and, and clean up and, and spend all summer doing this cleanup job if you want. And uh, you're not going to be invested in a piece of equipment that may not be the right one for you. Right. You know? So tell us about this one because it looks like it, it's not too heavy. No, it's not. And, and this is an electric battery powered ah, saw. Oh, that's even better. That's right. Um, this one's cooler. <laughs> you, you don't have to have a tool to adjust the chain. It's all uh, with a toolless. Right. It, it's, got an automatic oiling system and a chain brake so it's it's as safe as a chainsaw can be and if you um, have a battery powered saw all you have to do is change batteries and go back to work ah, nice. next year or three years from now when you want to use it make sure your battery's charged and away you go you work again where these gas saws that are a little too big they generally are sitting with fuel in them oh that's bad bad Right. And, and you're going to 
it's going to cost you. Right, right. And that's what's so nice about all the battery powered steel um, tools is you don't have to worry about mixing oil and gas or draining it or cleaning it. And it's like it's a battery, you charge it. That's right. And that same battery works in a whole array of tools. So you aren't buying a lot of different batteries. You just buy that one and you can get a line trimmer and a blower and an edger and all the tools that you want to use. To Excellent. work on your yard. And then what about this little one? It looks like just like a little gun <laughs> or a yeah. machine gun. <laughs> well, this is a new product that we came out with about a year ago, and it is a huge hit. Everybody that cool. buys them is, just goes crazy about it. They want to buy four more for all their kids and everything. <laughs> um, they have been advertised by uh, offshore scam artists trying to get people to send them $20 and <laughs> no. those aren't real ads. No. You go to a steel dealer for <laughs> a steel tool. Right. But this little rig is really great for a garden trimmer. And, and the garden trimmer, anything basically that's up to about three inches, you can cut nice. off. And, and how much is bigger than that when you're out there trimming? Yeah. You don't have to use loppers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really a sweet tool. Right. Kind of saving on your shoulders. That's right. Definitely. Yeah. And then what about safety? Because, you know, these are power tools. Mm -hmm. It's just because they're battery doesn't mean that you don't do the safety things. That's right. And, and it's just as much with this as with any power tools, your eyes and your ears, a helmet if you're working out in the, in the, uh, under the trees, right. uh, wear gloves, wear full length pants and shirts and dress for the job. That's right. the important thing. And the user manuals, the operator manuals, all explain what sure. needs to be done. Right. And then if we're interested, how can we find where to go buy them? Well, if you go to Steel, uh, Google Steel online, it's going to come up with uh, steel dealers. I like to tell them, well, if you live in Tualatin, put in Steel Tualatin, sure. and it's probably going to bring up your local dealer. Definitely, definitely. So, you know, there's going to be a steel dealer in your neighborhood, but go to Gardentime.tv and we'll have that link for you. But really, we want to be cleaning up our gardens this year so we can enjoy them. So much fun today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The springtime is all about planting and today we have a demonstration on how to plant a tree. You know the first thing we want to look at is making sure our hole is properly dug. So we'll take a look at the uh, root ball. In this case we have a bare root tree but it'll also be the same principles if we're planting a potted rooted tree. So we want to make sure our hole is prepped. We want to dig it wider and we want to dig it a little bit deeper. So for this case we're going to dig this out a little bit more and kind of get the hole the size that we want it. And then we want to make sure, after we got the hot so a little bit deeper and wider, we want to mix in a good all-purpose planting mix. We like the black gold planting mix, and what we'll do is we'll dump that in and kind of mix it 50-50 with the native soils that we're, we're digging out. And once we have our soils all prepped, we'll use a little bit of the espoma. You know, this is an organic good uh, fertilizer to get the roots started. While Ryan is finishing up, um, opening up this hole, I'm gonna tell you about the proper way to plant a tree. So this one is actually a bare root fruit tree. And I'm gonna show you the roots here. And so this time of year, you can get bare root. And later on the season, they're already gonna be growing in a container, but really the tips are all the same. So this is the graft right here. And so we wanna have that above ground. You don't wanna bury that. You wanna have the top of the soil about right here. And the same thing happens with if it's a container plant, whatever that level of the soil in the container, that's what you want to have at level here in the garden. You don't want to bury it all the way up here. You might think that's a good idea, but it will actually rot the plant. You'll rot all this bark and you'll kill the tree. Now that we have our hole prepped and ready, we have our good soil mixed in there, we have our starter fertilizer mixed in, now we're going to place our tree in the hole and kind of check the height, height of the tree to make sure we're at the right depth. And so Judy's kind of got it laid out here so we make sure it's not planted too deep. So now that we have it in the hole, we're going to either use our shovel or hands. You know, this is all mixed in soil. We're just kind of move this in, kind of pack this around the hole. You know, we want to make, make sure that it's getting all the way down and around so we don't have any air pockets in there because we don't want those little roots to dry out. So we want to make sure that the soil is all the way down. And just make sure that your graft is above ground here. That's that bump right there. And we're just gently pressing down the soil. Don't tamp it down too heavy because you're really going to compress all that air pockets. And so 
really make a little nice little home for this plant. You know, so now that we have it all planted, we want to make sure that we water it in real well. We know even though it's raining out, that water really needs to get down. You know, those roots are about a, about a foot down. So we'll take our hose and we really want to soak this and make sure that water is going all the way down to the bottom because this also will help settle the soil down and get around those roots. Watch up there, Judy. Don't want to get oh, you all okay. get you all wet, but let it soak in. After it's soaked in, we'll let it sit a minute, and then we'll repeat. Make sure that water gets all the way down because we don't want it just to run off the top like that. So the key here is in the next few weeks to make sure that this tree is kept nice and moist because you want it to be successful. You want to have a great tree this summer. We're really hoping that this demonstration will help you have great trees this year. It's time for a plant adventure. Come visit the nurseries of the Cascade Nursery Trail, a collection of independent specialty nurseries full of wonderful plants that deserve a visit. It's April Palooza. To celebrate, all our member nurseries are open every Friday and Saturday from 10 to 5 for your safe shopping pleasure. Start your perfect plant safari at CascadeNurseryTrail.com. Ryan, you need to brush up your look. Ryan, that is better. It's always better when you show off your Garden Time pride. Check out the Garden Time store on our webpage for a great selection of Garden Time gifts and apparel. Choose a hoodie, shirt, hat, bag, or mask for yourself or as a gift for the Garden Time fan in your life. See the complete selection on the Garden Time website. Pick up some Garden Time gear and show your Garden Time pride. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Recently, we showed you how to plant a fruit tree. Now, today we're going to take our fruit tree. This one happens to be an espalier fruit tree, which we're going to train along these wires. So today we're going to run these wires and show you how to do that. So Judy's going to show us the first steps of what we need to do. So it's not too hard. You need a drill and you need a level because you want to make sure that the wires are level to the tree so that your branches are straight. And because this is a slope, you really need that level because you can't just measure from the ground. So we already put this wire in and if you can see that we put the wire just a little bit higher than this branch. So then when you wire it to that, it'll go nice and straight and it won't be reaching or it won't be too low and it'll just be right on. So I got my drill going. I already have my measurement. I'm going to drill this hole. And I have a really good trick for you to get this eye bolt into the post is you use a screwdriver as a lever. And so you thread it through and then it helps you get some really good pressure while you're tightening it into the post. And now that we have our eye bolts you know, secured to the post, you know, I also wanted to point out that the eye bolt that we're using has a big spacing here. So what the spacing will do is it gets the tree as it grows, it will space it away from the fence or from the post. So it gives it a little bit more room for the air circulation back behind the branching or as the tree grows and expands, gives us some room. And the next step is to secure the wire. So I'm just using this wire and it's really pretty easy. You just want to attach it and then make some loops to secure it. And we're using wire instead of twine because we want it to last more than one season. Now that I have it secured on my side, I'm gonna give the wire to Ryan and he's gonna finish it up. So we're gonna run our wiring across the back here. And what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a turnbuckle. And what this will do is we'll hook it to this and we'll be able to tighten our wire to make it nice and tight. 
we're going to take our uh, clippers here. The Felcos are nice because they do have this nice little notch in the back for cutting wire. And so we're going to kind of measure out here, kind of put our turnbuckles in the same area. We're going to cut this. And now that we have our wire cut, we're going to attach it to our turnbuckle. We'll just kind of feed it through. And just like on the other end, we're going to twist this around just to secure it. And then we'll use another piece of wire to hook from the eye bolt to the turn. So now that we have our wire hooked up to our turnbuckle, we can use our turnbuckle to tighten the wire and make it nice and taut. So you know these were all the way screwed out. So what we'll do as our turnbuckle is we twist this metal piece, and what that does is it pulls these screws in together, and that's what will tighten both sides of our turnbuckle. Now that the wires are attached, it's time to attach the branches to the wire. So this branch is really a lot longer than the other side, so we're gonna trim it so it actually sends some energy to this other branch. And we're gonna find a bud that's on the upper side of the branch for the next growth on it. So I'm gonna trim it right here. And then I have some stretchy tape, this green stretchy tape, and I'm gonna tie it to the branch to the wire. And we use this stretchy tape because we don't want to use wire because it'll actually um, cut into the branch and then you damage the branch. So the stretchy tape is nice and soft. And I'm just going to do like a double knot and it's all secure. So now that we have the branch tied off, you know, as the tree continues to grow, this branch will continue to grow this way, and we'll just keep attaching it as it grows. Eventually, as this gets more uh, secure on its own, we'll be able to remove some of these older ties, but we'll want to make sure that we continue to train the tree along with wiring. So now we've taught you how to plant the tree and how to secure it in, as an espalier. So really, you can have a lot of success for your own trees in your own yard. I'm at Sagawa Nursery with Brian, and Brian, you know, it's springtime, we talk about color, but I think this is great that we're talking about things that have color all year long. That's what's nice about the dwarf conifers or any kind of conifers. You know, they're usually saying something throughout the year, you know, whether it's the fall or the winter, uh, golden foliage, bright blue, uh, they are, they're always pretty attractive and trying to show their uh, significance out there on the Definitely. landscapes. Definitely. This one is a showstopper. What's this? That's, that is, um, your, it's going to be Chief Joseph. Uh, it's in the, what would you call it, the lodgepole pine okay. family. Native uh, plant. Yes, found right here in, uh, I believe it was at Mount, probably right here in uh, Bend, Oregon area. I don't know exactly, but yeah, right here in Oregon. So it's one of our own. Uh, but what's so cool, look at how gold it is, but it doesn't stay like that, that's, does it? That's right. So with the I think it has to do with the cold. So, and that's what, when whoever found it was like this bright golden uh, attraction. And it, went right to it and uh, got it named and there's the story. It's really, yeah. really quite a story right here in Oregon. And it looks like you have two different plants because in summer it's it's dark green. So what a cool change That's right. within one plant. So it's going to be a lot like your lodgepole pine, that nice green and then, but the winter time, it's one of a kind there. Beautiful. And yep. then this one, I know you guys are famous for bonsai, but mm -hmm. it really kind of grows very contorted. Yeah, these are actually two Japanese white pine varieties, one uh, with irregularness I guess you could say it just has a habit of on its own so you don't really have to prune too much uh, it's gonna have its own style just let it grow um, you can see like four to six inches of top growth and right. two to three four on the sides so it really isn't gonna get out of hand and I'm gonna read this it's called Fukusumi yep, so that's very correct. beautiful name yes. and then what about the smaller one another Japanese white pine this is just a nice little dwarf it's gonna be more like a mugo pine actually like a shrub effect okay. uh, again you don't have to prune it a little two inches of growth at the most on the top uh, but it does have a really nice it has the Japanese white pine effect it's got that bluish silverish uh, needle uh, really tight growing kind of new for us we're 
kind of excited. But yes, it would be for the bonsai enthusiast. Uh -huh. it would, it'd be right there if you just go in and look for it. it you could have all your branches and ready to go. Small needle, uh, always a, a plus when you're doing some uh, bonsai. Uh, and this picks. one's called Catherine um, Elizabeth. Yes. That and then right. this one is totally different. A really tiny, tiny needle. I, again, another newer one for us here. Uh, it's a uh, cryptomeria, golden promise. I believe this four to six foot tall. You know, it's only going to mm -hmm. have like two to three inches of growth. Um, so it really, you know, over many years it might get bigger, but I would say right around as an intermediate shrub, you know, three it's to It's nice foot you don't tall. have to worry about pruning because people are so afraid of pruning. So it's nice that it stays nice and, and kind of That's packed. right. Some of these, they actually feel like they have teeth, you know, it's like they're, <laughs> they're so prickly. But uh, this one really soft and it does the golden promise name would probably come in the summer after the new growth. It would have that yellow gold uh, effect on there for the new growth. Yeah. And what about this last one? This last one, Korean fur uh, becoming really popular here are demanded and of course there's never enough around but it's hard to find them and but a big demand and that's just a this one right in front of us is just it's a dwarf one uh, it really has no tree effect on it it's going to be more like a just you can see about one to two inches of growth so Perfect. it's very compact and uh but just it's got that you know that it's nice silver. yeah it's mm -hmm. kind of like the, there's a, several other ones in the korean fur that have that silver in there like all furs, their their cone would be on the upright. Right, so they grow on top. Yeah, they do. So it's kind of an attraction. Well, you know, this is just a small selection of all the conifers that Tagawa Nursery has right now. And you know, you need those focal points in your garden or even in a container. So come on up to Woodland, talk to Brian and his staff. I just love these conifers this time of year. Thanks, Appreciate Brian. It. Thank you. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Kick off the spring right at the Ladies' Days at French Prairie Gardens. Enjoy local craft brews, cider, and baked treats and learn about new plants for the coming year. Register to join this basket planting party. Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Garden. Well, it's late winter, early spring, and for those of us that grow our own citrus, we know that it's coming on. And so we've been out, been out harvesting, and this is our Meyer lemon tree. So we had kind of a bumper crop this, this winter. We've had 30 to 40 Meyer lemons on our tree out in the greenhouse. And so now that they're ripe, we are going to make limoncello. And so a few years ago, we did this recipe and we learned something very important that when you peel it, you don't want a lot of this white substance, which is the pith of the fruit. You want as much of the yellow part, um, which has all the oils and all the flavors that you're going to need for your limoncello. And so I'm using just a regular vegetable peeler and I'm trying not to dig in too much. And I'm going to just be peeling that yellow. Um, part that we're going to be using in our limoncello and I'm going to be using this on four lemons and Ryan. And I'm going to use the other four because we use eight lemons per quart so while Julie's peeling hers I'm going to zest the other four so I'm just going to kind of you know, use our little zester and also be careful not to go too deep we want it kind of this lighter color here and not into that white because we don't want all of the pith in there to make it bitter so we're just going to zest up these other four here so we're going to finish our four lemons each and then we'll be right back. So I'm finished peeling my fourth lemon and how'd you do? And I've finished I was zesting mine. 
here. So, you know, I'm going to start adding this in. You know, we used the Meyer lemon. And so you can, you know, buy, if you're not growing your own, you could do this from lemons that you purchase at the store, but you do want to make sure that, you know, they usually come with like a little waxy coating. You want to make sure you use a lot of hot water beforehand to kind of melt that waxy coating off. And you know, we also will use the juice from these lemons. And that's what we have in this glass here. And we're gonna use a ice cube tray to freeze the lemon juice in little portions because it's much easier to bake with when we're ready for that. So now we're gonna take our quart uh, canning jar here. And we're gonna just first gonna add in all of our zest into the, into the jar. It smells so nice, that. doesn't it? It smells great. And then after we get the zest in there, then right, we'll add we'll our peels to it. And it's really pretty. It's so colorful. All right, you ready? Yep, so now we got our zest and our peels in there, and then we're going to add our vodka. You know, in the vodka, you can use, you know, whichever your, your preference is from the liquor store. You know, you can use a cheap vodka if you want to or whatever's on sale, or you can use, you know, uh, you know, top shelf, but you know, we're just using kind of a middle of the road vodka here. And we are just going to fill up that jar, just kind of not all the way to the top. We'll leave a little bit of room in there. Right up to about there. All right. I'm going to just cover it and tighten that. And now that the jar is all totally done, this is one we did a couple weeks ago. So after you've got it all set up, sit it on a windowsill or on a kitchen counter. And every couple days or so, we just want to give it a little shake like this just to kind of make sure everything's incorporated. Then after about a couple weeks, we got one more step we need to do. So now it's been a couple weeks. You can see the difference between the one we just did and the one that's been sitting for a couple weeks. This one's a little bit darker and this just sucked in all of those oils from the lemons. So we're going to Take this, we're going to open our jar, and then we're just going to strain this into our big bowl right here. So I'm doing that, dumping it in there. I'm going to take my little spoon and just kind of press all of the yumminess out of there. And then we'll just move this off to the side. And so now the next step is to add the simple syrup. So simple syrup is just a really easy recipe. It's usually four cups of water and four cups of sugar, and then you reduce it down until the sugar is all dissolved. Well, we like our um, lemoncello just a little bit less sweet, so we used only three cups of sugar. So I have that all ready to go here. We've already boiled it down. And so I'm gonna add it to the vodka mixture right there. So that's almost four cups, and I'm just going to add just a little bit more. And now I'm going to combine it all. Just give it some stirs. And, oh, that looks really good, and it smells really nice, too. We're using equal parts of the simple syrup to our vodka mixture. So we have this quart jar that had four cups of vodka in there, and then you're adding your four cups of your simple syrup. Right, so then that is the recipe, and it's really an easy recipe. And now we're gonna just add the limoncello into this really pretty bottle. And just because we wanna maybe leave this on our counter, or we can put it in the fridge, because of the alcohol content, you don't have to worry about it spoiling. So you can leave it on the counter. But we like to leave it in the fridge or in the, even in the freezer because limoncello is really great when it's ice cold. So Judy, you almost full? That bottle is topped off now. I don't think we're quite full yet. Ah, so you want a taster. So if you grow your own lemons or virtually any other citrus at home, this is a great easy recipe to do that you can enjoy all summer long. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for watching Garden Time. Don't forget to come down to French Prairie Gardens and pick out a beautiful basket. Or sign up for their Ladies' Day and build your own. And for more information about that event or anything you've seen on today's show, please go to GardenTime.tv. Ryan and I thank you for watching our first hour-long show of the season, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.